Hey everyone, and welcome to episode three of Healers from the Facebook community, The Less Stress Space. Now in this week's episode, I have the great pleasure of speaking with Lou Martin. Lou is a native of California and a resident of Bandon in West Cork in Ireland for many years. He's one of those people whose personal story is both fascinating and inspiring. Uh, His life has been devoted to the study and the channeling of spirit guides, and he's taught and studied in the area of spiritualism in the US, in Canada, and in Europe. I was immediately drawn to interview Lou for this series because it's my firm belief that personal healing and an inspiration to live as meaningful a life as possible can be found in faith. And that's regardless of whatever church or belief system or spiritual connection you prescribe to. Now, for those of you who aren't particularly spiritual, this conversation is not about religion. As with all of my guests, my intention is to convey as many practical and applicable tools as possible for you, the watcher. You know, things that you can use to live as full and as blissful a life as possible. And on this front, Lou delivers in spades. We cover the events that triggered his introduction to the world of spiritualism and channeling. We talk about meditation as an important refuge, uh, and that resonates across all faiths. We talk about why we turn to faith or spiritual pursuits for refuge. We talk about the role of love in spiritualism and in life. We talk about using spiritualism to manage the pressures of life how to orientate your life so that things move in your desired direction. We cover gratitude, forgiveness, journaling, and right throughout the talk, uh, we keep to the practical steps that we can take for maximum personal and spiritual benefit. Now, Lou is also a songwriter, so I got a bit cheeky at the end of the conversation and put a bit of pressure on him to play one of his songs, which he duly obliged. Um, I packaged that up as a little bit of a video at the end of our talk, so I hope you enjoy that too. Now, Lou's uh, details are are in the description, so please feel free to reach out to him. Uh, He does one-to-one channeling, workshops, retreats, and a daily session of morning prayers for those on his Facebook page. I hope you enjoy the conversation and, and the music as much as I did. And now I bring you Lou Martin. Okay, so Lou, welcome to The Less Stress Space and thank you so much for making the time to talk to us this morning. And welcome to everybody who's watching uh, to episode three of what we're calling (laughs) Healers. Brilliant. Um, And I'm very grateful, Lou, that you've made the time. Thank you, Peter. It's a pleasure. And I have to say, it's, it's... it, it's kind of almost fortuitous, you know, the way something takes on a life of its own, Lou, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Because I started this series of programs only a couple of weeks ago, really. Right. And, um, and then on a whim, myself and Rochelle and my wife, we went to the market at Bandon. Right. We were uh, just hanging out at the market, having a coffee. Uh, and in this fantastic, uh, almost typical, but not stereotypical American way. Okay. Um, you, yes, I'll take that. <laughs> you walked up. <laughs> you walked up and just introduced yourself, mm, you know, and mm, said hello. Mm. And, uh, and it turns I think it was all the light glowing around you, Peter. <laughs> That's what drew me. Yeah, come on. We, we, we've, got a, we've got a couple of mutual friends then, as it turned out. Yeah. And, uh, and we had a conversation. And that conversation kind of evolved into the fact that, you know, you, you are, in my view, a healer very much in your own way. Thank because, you. Because I ended up to talking about the program that I'm doing and the less stress space. Yeah. And, you know, you know you're more into, you know, you're into channeling, you're into spirituality. Okay? Right. Um, now, as a lapsed Catholic, more or less, as somebody who was brought up in the Catholic faith. Yes. I'm coming to you as a complete novice. And, okay. But my, my real reason for, for, for talking is because I think there's a fabulous conversation to be had um, yeah. in around spirituality and belief and how that can help people yeah. to heal sure. uh, and to manage their stress because faith is, is a major thing uh, in people's mm-hmm. lives that mm-hmm. they, where they find refuge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well said. Um, yeah, so, that's right. No, so thank you very much for, for making the time. And I'm so curious Pleasure. to find out about you. And, uh, and I'm sure the, everybody watching will be to, to find out about you and 
what you bring to the table. So if sure. you don't mind, just maybe give me an introduction. Yeah, happy to. And uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. It's, it's a pleasure. Um, yeah, so um, where, do we, where, do we, where do we begin? Um, uh, I was mentioning I was working in a, in a bookstore, a spiritual bookstore, when I turned 30 uh, back in uh, Santa Monica, where I'm, where I'm from. I'm from L.A. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I started reading. I was really struggling at the time. And I started reading uh, people's near-death experiences, mm -hmm. um, uh, the Dalai Lama and the mm -hmm. story of his, the reincarnations of the Dalai Lamas and how one... Uh, knows the objects and identified the objects of his previous incarnation as a child says that's mine That's mine these kinds of things okay. that, that he's tested um, and you know the paradigm started to uh, unravel uh, quite a bit for me and then we had something in uh, in the world called the harmonic convergence which was a, both an astrological and a, a global event that was connected to the Mayan calendar and uh, evidently the Mayans were the timekeepers all the way back in Atlantis. Mm -hmm. um, and so that really called to me. I thought there's something for me about this that really calls to me. This is important to me. Mm. So I um, went uh, and did the ceremonies uh, with people that were being offered at the time. And I actually got invited to see my first channel a man named Jack Purcell, who channels an entity named Lazarus. And I've been working with Lazarus and Jack for 35 years now, mm. ever since then. And they basically said the um, harmonic convergence is a real thing. It's an event uh, of spiritual awakening for the planet. You are a part of that. And this is going to be the next five and then the next 25 years of your life. So from 1987 to 2012, uh, I was studying at workshops and having experiences and this, uh, you know, the light really went on and I, I actually had experiences that, you know, um, Kundalini awakening, uh, mystical awakening experiences in my body from meditation, mm -hmm. which completely transcended my relationship to time and space and my heart opened up uh, enormously and it was like the before and after moment of my life. Wow. So from August of 87 onward, it's been a different story. Okay. Well, yeah. Thank yeah. you for that. Okay. Sure. Um, so as you know, Ireland is a Catholic country. Yeah. I was, I was raised Catholic uh, and... Me too. You know, you know we're, we're, yeah, and you too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Too. And too, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of, you know, we're, we're conditioned to um, believe certain things and, yeah. and you know, out of respect for for that faith and for um, which is the dominant faith in this country, yeah, uh, and for you you know and for the people who practice it, um, I'm gonna you know gonna t not talk about this as an option to Catholicism, but what really sparks my curiosity is uh, you know I suppose having gotten disillusioned with being a Catholic sure. in my experience, sure. my own Likewise. personal experience, <laughs> I've gotten disillusioned with it. You're not alone. I yeah. moved uh, a number of years ago to, towards exploring other types of faiths. Yeah. You know, and what particularly resonated with me was, uh, I suppose, uh, you know, Tibetan style um, Buddhism. Yeah. Um, oh, meditation yeah. struck a real chord with me, mm. which, which is a revelation. And I think yeah. regardless of, of, your, of your faith, meditation should be central to, to your life. Yes, you I know? agree. Um, or at least a central pillar. Yeah, yeah. So what sparked your initial curiosity? You mentioned Kundalini Awakening at the start. Yeah. So you yeah. know, was it in a particular, you know, was it just a book? Was it a meeting somebody? How, how did you get into that? Initially? Sure, sure. So the, to give you the full picture, um, and I think I mentioned this before, there were two, two formative things in my, uh, in my childhood. One is that my parents moved quite a lot mm. for whatever reason. My father was a, a medical doctor and um, he was also the author of seven uh, books wow. for the public, yeah. Uh, and so uh, I, whether he was very ambitious or, or restless or whatever, so we moved 12 times between my birth and graduating high school. And then um, my dad was actually murdered when I was 17, uh, the summer before my senior year. And he was working in a clinic. Someone was very depressed because they were terminal cancer. This was not a patient of my dad's, but he came in with a gun, asked for a doctor, 
and shot my dad through the heart. My God. Yeah. yeah. So that was um, the beginning of the Hamlet years, you know, and that's why I um, was smoking a lot of you know what during my 20s, as okay. we discussed earlier, yeah. and, and, and I've been sober for 30 years now. Yeah. But um, uh, I was really searching and reading and, and uh, you know, trying to find the answers, basically. Mm. So when uh, my, 30, my 30th year came around, for whatever cosmic reason, the, the story of the awakening is, uh, and I may have said this before, so I, I met a friend, he gave me a piece of quartz crystal, and he said, if you meditate with this, there's a thing called Kundalini, which is the spiritual energy that's dormant at the base of your spine, and sometimes when people meditate with on that with a piece of quartz, they can open it up. The first time I did that, I had this cosmic awakening experience. So, you know... There's a lot of help in the universe when we're, we're asking for that help. It, it will show up in, in amazing ways. And yeah, that really was showing to me, that showed me I am a spiritual being having a human experience. Yeah. Well, you know. That's incredible. Mm. So, I mean, obviously that's a tragic story, you know. Yeah, the that part you know, of it. And it must have been tough, even the, the moving part, you know, is, sure. you know, because I think we all crave as, as, as kids in formative years, developing years, stability. Um, mm -hmm. And so I would imagine that, that 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 was obviously very very tough. So it was a challenge. It wasn't terrible. Would it, it, be, was a it was a challenge. Yeah, okay. but I got to see the world. You know, we, yeah. I was born in Chicago, grew up in uh, outside of New, uh, New York in northern New Jersey, and then Los Angeles. So I mean, I had a very rich cultural life with movies and music. Growing up with the Beatles, you mentioned the Beatles yeah. and all that. And um, yeah, he's a big music fan. Yes, you know, bigger yes. than I am even. Well, there you go. Incredible. Yeah. So all of that was my uh, and films, as I'm saying. And I, I studied theater, yeah. and I was in a repertory company at one point in my twenties, etc. So all of that gave me the um, uh, the the confidence, the willingness, the opportunity to, as my guides would say, build a bridge and get over myself. Sure. Yes. So that's where, and to be God's holy fool, to talk about anything if I think it can help someone. Yeah. And to, to, to learn how to get out of the way. You know, the um, growing up Christian, growing up Irish Catholic in America, not in Ireland, which is a much softer version of that. It's much rougher over here, I have to say. Having lived in Ireland now nearly 15 years and seen that personally in, in many different ways. Mm. But, um, you know, as you and I were talking before, my friend, this is such a time of seeking and searching for people because of the lockdown and because of the challenges that people have been going through yeah. over the last since you know march of 2020 etc here we are november of 2021 so you know uh this is god saying you know do i have your attention yet mm -hmm. you know and like we're saying you know i can't give you your answer you can't give me my answer all we can do is share what we found mm -hmm. with each other as you're doing with your series here which is why i'm thrilled to be a part of it and say this works for me mm -hmm. This has helped me. If it can help you, I'm happy to share it. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you summed it up. You, you know, that's how I would nearly su uh, summarize the whole series, you know, which is just about options and, and that. But what I'm, I suppose for anybody who's watching in particular, there's an important message in this. And uh, before we move on to talking about spirituality and belief and, yeah. and, and what it means in your life, that little bit more. Um, you know, I want to try to build a bridge between, let's say, your experience, which is obviously to the vast majority of people, an extreme one. Yeah. If you, with respect. With <laughs> well, respect. that's my style. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, you know, what, what happens with, when most people in my experience and what I've seen and observed from talking to people, uh, when they have a spiritual awakening mm -hmm. um, or when they have a change in direction in their life, it is normally as the result of, uh, well, two things. Tragedy. It's either a yeah. tragedy. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Or else it's searching for something more. Sure, sure. You know, yeah. maybe they've had a good life up to now, but... They, they, they think, you know, there must be something more to this. Yeah. So in terms of tragedy and with most people here in, in Ireland in particular, um, I would say that rather than an extreme situation, yeah. a lot of people are stressed. A lot of people are, are looking for answers and for reassurance because of, you know, what's happening in the world at the moment. You yeah. Know? Uh, yeah. And a lot of that, it's mostly been driven by the COVID uh, situation we find ourselves in. Yeah. Um, so this you know, a lot of people out there, and that's why I'm really interested to talk to you about spirituality, sure, is that sure. I, I feel that people are looking for answers yeah. that may not be available in the texts from government and, you know, yeah. and, and all of the recommendations. Yeah. You know? yeah. And people naturally fall back to 
a spiritual belief for comfort and for solace um, and for succor, you know, mm -hmm. as we say. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just wondering, you know, now that you're, if maybe you can enlighten us with what you do on a daily basis. I know that yeah. you host something on Facebook. It's a, it's a daily morning prayer session from yeah. between nine and 10. Yeah. Can you tell us about how that came about? Sure, sure. Well, that's, bless your heart, my friend. You're, 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 you're just spoiling me here. I mean, that's, um, that's been my response, Peter, to, to creating, to needing to create a ritual in my life mm -hmm. that gives me, aside from what I also do every day, which is I do uh, listen to meditations, guided meditations for about an hour, sometimes more or less, depending on how crazy and stressed out I am at the time. Uh, and then I write in my journal every morning, three pages plus. That's um, being a student of the artist's way. Uh, Julia Cameron's program yep. and then um, morning prayers is my reading of uh, other channel teachers like Esther Hicks and Abraham, mm. uh, Sonia Roman and Oren, uh, Jack Purcell and Lazarus, etc, etc. Yep. Uh, Eileen Caddy of Findhorn in Scotland, etc. So these are the bright lights, you know, that remind me what the truth feels like and how simple you know as we were saying before this is really meant to be mm. it's not meant to be esoteric uh, confusing complicated fear-based fearful it's not meant to be any of those things mm. you know uh, I truly do believe uh, that uh, God is love mm. God God is all that is is the way Lazarus is, has uh, taught us to define the divine I call the guides that I channel my higher self soul and spirit I just call them divine love because mm. that's that's an easier way for me to remember them mm. and uh, but it is that same unconditional love peace acceptance uh, etc and and uh, intimacy with people so when I'm channeling with people when I'm doing groups etc etc um, what channeling is is getting into a uh, a meditative trance state that anyone can learn to do with practice, mm -hmm. like playing the guitar or any any other skill, and then inviting your your wisest, most loving uh, self to come through you. And so I, I know that it is the higher self, soul, and spirit, plus what whoever else needs to come through. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have an uncle that you were close to that you didn't get to say goodbye to before he died, etc. Mm -hmm. He might pop in for a visit and give you a message and this kind of thing. Great, you know, it's it's like being the telephone, you know, <laughs> truly. And anyone can learn to do it. And it, even simpler than that, like you're, I love what you said about meditation. I agree. Meditation is in every single spiritual tradition in the mm -hmm. world essential mm -hmm. because if we cannot quiet our mind, mm -hmm. we cannot open our hearts and we cannot awaken our spirit. But if we will do that, quiet the mind, open the heart, awaken the spirit, mm -hmm. then you and I feel this sense of joy and excitement and enthusiasm. And mm -hmm. then we can go out into the big, bad, beautiful world mm -hmm. and, and make some sense of it and make some new friends. Fantastic. Yeah. So the format, because there's so much, in, in, even in what you just said, no, Lou, okay? So, we, you know, you mentioned, <laughs> you mentioned uh, meditation, uh -huh. you know, and I want to come back to that. Mm -hmm. You mentioned acceptance. Yeah. Uh, and I want to come back to that. Sure. Uh, because there's peace to be found in acceptance. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but, but again, the prayer session, if we can just maybe uh, book in sure. that. Sure, sure. And, you know, yeah. if you can describe, um, do people log in and, and yeah. do you channel and it, yeah. it, uh, at that stage? Um, and, and what's the format exactly for that? Sure. So it's very open. It's very relaxed. Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting there, you know, uh, what I do, uh, uh, Facebook has been great for me. You know, uh, when I was first here in Ireland in a space of five years, I was driving around and uh, I did groups twice a week in uh, Cork at Dervish Books. And I did groups all the way out uh, on the other end of the county to uh, Skibbereen you know, weekly. So I was covering some territory and that was a joy <laughs> for a guy from LA to, to be able to drive around Ireland and not deal with uh, Los Angeles traffic was, it was a dream come true. Um, you know, the little, uh, the sheep by the side of the road and, and the beautiful countryside and all that of West Cork. So, um, it, it was, it was love at first sight as we say, but what Facebook has allowed me to do and, and doing everything online as I do now, I've given up the car and all that. Uh, so that allows me to four times a week, just create a space where, uh, I read these things. I read poems from different people. Mm -hmm. I'm very blessed, Peter. I have a lot of conscious people in my life at this point mm -hmm. that I've connected with all over the world. And so, um, MJ Halligan, for example, she's a friend of mine here from 
Ireland. She's in New Zealand. She wrote a beautiful piece about laughter and love and, and living guilt-free, a, a joyous life. And I said, MJ, that was great. Let's let's chat next week, etc. So, you know, this kind of thing. I just, you were mentioning Ali Ray. Mm. Uh, she's a new friend. She's all the way out in Hawaii. So we did, a, you know, at nine o'clock her time, seven p.m. my time. We did a we did a live, and that was become my first podcast on Spotify. Uh, so the idea of morning prayers is I do channel at the end of morning prayers usually, and I'm reading uh, and working with different guided meditations and messages. So in the space of an hour, I'm filling people's cup, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and you can take that and uh, and get some inspiration and uh, some direction for the day. Okay. Yeah. So, and you know, I, I it's assume, a joy. It's I assume joy. that there is a cross section of people yeah. would tune into that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know you've got thousands on your um, uh, on your Facebook page. You know, you know, there, yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of thousand at least, but which you know, I mean, we've only at this stage. I think I'm looking at about 180, 190 members great. On, on less stress, great. and it's growing. Yeah. Which is great. Yes. Um. So we're doing something right. Yes. Um. But again, I mean, you know, people of all faiths and of all beliefs and walks of life, I assume, yeah. are, are finding something in what you're saying. Yeah. Which is, yeah. Which is interesting in itself. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. As we were saying earlier, uh, you know, if you've got uh, a, a computer and the Wi-Fi connection, you have a, a choice of anything and everything out there that, um, you know, uh, there's just a feast mm. of spiritual resources out there. There are so many wonderful teachers and teachings, and I see so many people uh, you know, younger people moving into their power and, uh, you know, teaching me a lot, etc. So um, you can you can find the answers. The, the basic message to come back to, let's say, acceptance, right? Mm -hmm. So acceptance is uh, learning to trust ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Excuse me. And, and to see that no matter what, how challenging the situation is, there's an opportunity for growth in it. Mm -hmm. Ali and I were talking about that, that life is not happening to you so much as it's happening for you. Mm. And just the willingness to make that decision and that discernment and move from victim consciousness yep. to how is this serving me? Mm. How am I learning to be a better co-creator mm. in the world with this situation? Like your, your lady and her kids at uh, a man point and all that, you know, you're giving her through your energy, through your resources, through your messages, you're giving her a reminder of what her heart really already knows. Mm. You know, I mean, the truth of it is that I don't believe I ever tell anything uh, to anyone that they don't somewhere already know inside themselves, mm. you know, or there wouldn't be any place to really hold on to it. Mm. I mean, you know, um, there has to be that openness, you know, uh, and that's what tragedy and challenge does. It says you don't know everything. You don't understand what's happening here at the moment. That's why you're struggling. Mm -hmm. the, you know, can you come back to peace? Can you come back to blessing the situation? Mm -hmm. Can you come back to blessing and forgiving the person or yourself who are creating this drama in the situation, etc.? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the theme that I hear from my teachers these days about unity consciousness, how, you know, between uh, politics and uh, uh, the lockdown and COVID and all that, you know, we're, we're very much you know, at odds with each other in ways that we've not ever been before mm -hmm. uh, to this degree right now. And um, the challenge is, can I still bless, you know, Jesus's message, pray for your enemies because you have none. Mm -hmm. Even those who mean you harm, if you're not afraid of them and you don't give your power to them, you continue to be sovereign and have dominion over the situation, you know, as you pray for and receive God's will mm -hmm. for you in the situation. So God means everything for good. Mm -hmm. And that's what unconditional love, I believe, brings us back to, mm -hmm. to have a, a meditative practice and to have a sense of discernment and detachment and a willingness to accept mm -hmm. the gift of a challenging situation, which takes work for all of us every day, myself included, then all of that gives you a foundation to allow something to, uh, to bless you and to prosper you and to, mm -hmm. to lift you up. Mm -hmm. But if we're fighting with ourselves and we're fighting with the world, it's yeah. not so easy. You know, what strikes me listening to what you're saying is that, you know, when I look at the world today, there, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of polarity. Yeah. You know, it, it, you know, there's a lot of binary thinking going on. You're either in this camp or that camp, or you're right or you're wrong, or you're in the States, you're either red or you're blue. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when it comes to uh, the ordinary person in the street yeah. um, who would aspire 
to getting some form of inner peace yeah. and solace. Okay? Yeah, yeah. A lot of those people might look at the chaos around them mm-hmm. in the world at the moment, mm-hmm. and then they would look at somebody who they would consider to be, a, you know, have achieved peace. You know, maybe mm-hmm. it's not enlightenment in a, kind mm-hmm. of a Buddhist type way, yeah. but, but to have achieved peace and to be at peace with themselves. Mm-hmm. But how but they might never think i'm never going to get there that person is you know like in this mm-hmm. binary way you mm-hmm. know i'm in this i'm in chaos mm-hmm. but i see somebody who's got peace in their lives mm-hmm. despite what's going on mm-hmm. so talk to me about the practical steps that, mm-hmm. I mean, what can somebody do who's experiencing a lot of chaos in mm-hmm. their lives um in in, in a, maybe using a spiritual path or yeah. whatever how can they get to build in more peace on a daily basis brilliant brilliant that that is the question that's absolutely the question how do I get from chaos and confusion and pain and overwhelm to peace and possibility and hope yeah. and openness and faith and trust? And uh, basically, you know, again, to me, it is, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, all spiritual. So I've been saving this. Uh, religion is for people that are afraid of going to hell. Spirituality is for people who have already been there. Okay. So that's my working definition and it's good for a laugh. And it's what I come back to, which is to say, uh, all of us are here in the school called earth to practice these spiritual values that we're talking about. And when you start learning that meditation and journaling and service and tithing and these kinds of things are helpful, uh, then you start to build a bigger space of worrying less about your own situation and focusing more about serving and helping and supporting others. Mm -hmm. And you find, whoa, suddenly things are flowing again. There's more peace of mind here when I'm more focused on others than I am about myself, etc. So to me, that is in every spiritual path. Mm -hmm. These are the golden rules Mm -hmm. and and they 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 help us to get out of our own way, Mm -hmm. you know, my guides say peace is the presence of infinite possibilities. Mm-hmm. And so uh, in drama and chaos and confusion, we lose our peace or we give away our peace mm-hmm. or our peace gets stolen or shattered, however we create it. And to have a, a, a spiritual practice is to say that my peace of mind is the greatest value I can bring to my life and my world this day and every day. Mm-hmm. What can I do to attain it? to maintain it and to sustain it. Mm. And so however you integrate those values and those energies Mm. with your daily living, then things begin to move in the right direction. That's what I find. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. That's a great answer. Thank Um, you. And you know- 64 over here. (laughs) (laughs) I almost know something, yes. But as I was um, coming over in the car for our discussion this morning, uh, I did listen. I listened to your yeah. discussion with Ali Ray. Yeah. And I remember what struck me at the start. I was I was smiling to myself in the car because uh, at the outset of that conversation, um, she spoke about uh, the importance of silence mm. uh, in her life. Yeah. You know? And yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, she said she was speechless at the start. You know, to be joining in mm-hmm. the conversation, mm-hmm. and uh, there was a mm-hmm. bit of a laugh about that. Yeah. And then she naturally stepped into a description of how. You know, speechlessness, you know, I mean, yes. about being silent, yeah. uh, i.e. the importance of, of silence and just maintaining a meditative state on a daily basis yeah. is so important. Yeah, yeah. No, I've discovered that, you know, yeah. and, and so it really links to what you're saying, isn't yeah. it? Oh, God, absolutely. I mean, it, it's, um, yeah, no, it's it's beautiful. And again, this is, this is the depth of your practice, my friend, and why you're inspired to, you know, uh, bring these resources and these ideas to a, a wider audience because you're finding yourself the value of this, you know, and that... Um, mm. Um, you know, what she, what I hear from Ali, who I love and adore is that, uh, she's hungry. You know, my phrase is we're hungry and thirsty after wisdom and knowledge. I don't know where that comes from, but I I really, that's one I like a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, you know, it's, uh, if we can, if we can quiet the mind, as I was saying, then we can listen to, uh, the silence and the silence will teach us help us, heal us, Mm. guide us, all of that. As soon as the mind has to get engaged, you know, there's the ego and this, that, and the to-do list and this, that, and the relationships and this, that, and you know, that's fine. That has a place in the world and in our lives. But when, you know, the way my guides say is most of the world, most of the time 
is in our heads. Mm. And that is basically a computer program, mm. you know, that we've taken from the church, from the state, from the school, from the family, everyone put it in a thing and think this is reality, this is what's possible. But then like we're saying, the gift of a crisis and challenge mm. is you go, I do not know the solution to this problem. Mm. I don't know if there is an answer mm. to this terminal condition called life. Mm. I want to live. I want to love. I want to be healthy and happy and prosperous and free. How can I do that? And the silence will fill in those gaps. Perfect. You know, that's a great way of putting it. Now, by natural extension, we talk about, you know, your morning routine, which involves and mine does as well, meditation. Mm -hmm. And something that I am familiar with, and you mentioned it earlier, was uh, you say you're a fan of the, uh, the artist's way. Yeah which uh, my wife actually introduced me to the artist's way a number of years back. Okay. And the one thing that I took away from it was morning notes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the one thing that it was all fantastic, but this really struck a chord with Mm. me, you know, which is daily journaling. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So, and you mentioned that you journal every morning. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, when you're not in silence and maybe you're doing what I think the author describes, it's almost like a brain dump onto the pages. It doesn't have to make sense. Right. You just write and just almost automatic sometimes. Stream stream of consciousness. Stream of consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So maybe you can talk to us about, I mean, that's another practical step that people can apply. Yeah. Um, Can you talk to us about your experience of of morning notes? Sure. Well, I love artist way so much. I've, I've actually taught it like half a dozen times at this point, you know, in person and online. Uh, I did it again last year with, with, two wonderful students which was great and uh yeah it's what you're saying there this is uh you know uh how we how we empty the mind you know so peter what i do is i i tend to write what happened yesterday and i make sense and peace and acknowledge and forgive and bless and all that of yesterday so that I can be present for today. Mm. So, you know, if, uh, and it it is a skill, it is a, uh, like my minister in LA, Michael Beckwith has a great phrase. He calls it a blissipline. It's a blissful discipline, which is yes, there's a little effort involved and, but you're going to find that it, um, the result is more than the effort you put into it by far. So if we can just double back onto something that you just said earlier, Lou, um, yeah. I want to try to connect, uh, you know, the, the gratitude journaling that I have been uh, doing mm-hmm. in the past. I've actually uh, done some gratitude journaling mm-hmm. as well as the morning notes. Mm-hmm. So maybe you can talk to me about your experience and maybe the difference between the two in how they serve you. Mm-hmm. Let's say morning notes in the mm-hmm. morning are, are journaling or mm-hmm. whatever way you want to put it. And then gratitude journaling, which is a slightly different discipline. Sure. So great question. And I'm really glad we're talking about gratitude because... Uh, that is one of the secret weapons that the universe has given us. Uh, so my guides say all prayer begins in humility and ends in gratitude. So the need, the desire, the crisis, we humble ourselves before God. And then the gratitude says it is done. Mm-hmm. And until we get to that place in our heart where we know it is done, we're still, you know, asking, worrying, wondering, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The way I work with gratitude is I uh, have a ritual where I count the things I'm grateful for uh, as I go to sleep, as I wake up every night and every morning. This happened. That happened. This happened. That happened. This happened. That was great. That was great. Thank you for that. Da 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 da. da. Anything that you know it was a was an event in my previous day. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And I, I touch on the things that I'm really grateful for in the, in the process of, of those things. And that just is an easy way that works for me very well. But where I know that you're quite right um, in terms of manifesting things and writing out what we want mm-hmm. and saying what we're grateful for in advance. Mm-hmm. That's one of the secrets. Like, you know, whatever the crisis is, uh, if you write out, you know, I know this or something better is now on its way to me or this situation is now joyously resolved or whatever. It, it really takes work because we get so attached and we're so uh, overwhelmed sometimes by the challenge and the need. Mm. But if you can do that, as you know from your own experience, that will begin to seed the ground to allow those things to happen. But there's no doubt that gratitude is one of the most powerful energies in the universe. Because, last thought here, my mm. guides say it's love, joy, appreciation, and gratitude. 
Abraham talks a lot about appreciation. You know, I appreciate this opportunity to be here with you, to get to know you and to become friends. We had a, you brought your great guitar over. We had a lovely evening on Monday where we played each other some songs, etc. You're going to let me do that here uh, in, a, in a bit. All that's wonderful. You know, the more that I am grateful, the more uh, I have to be grateful for. So, yeah. Yeah. And just to clarify, Abraham yeah. is one of the channeled yes. uh, entities, yes. I presume. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. Okay. And there are books, Abraham Hicks. Yes, that's right. Am I, yeah, yeah, yeah right? that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Perfect. Esther Hicks and Abraham. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, but let's, I just want to scratch beneath the surface of that sure. again, right? Sure, because, sure. you know, if somebody's watching um, the video, they're on the, the, they're on the page and they hear me talking about gratitude or they, they, they hear you talking about gratitude yeah. and, you know, writing down what we're grateful for. What's the actual operating mechanism that makes a real impact on your life? I mean, you know, if, if you sit in gratitude or if you meditate on what you're, you've made a list, you're, you're writing this down. In your experience, again, I'm just curious, is it the experience of seeing the words um, on the page right. and, and thinking about, you know, how does it actually, how, where does the rubber hit the road sure. with gratitude? Sure. No, it's, it's a great question. It's always about the feelings. Mm -hmm. The feelings is the most powerful part of us. The mind is like the tip of the iceberg yep. and the emotion is the iceberg that's beneath the, beneath the mind. And so the heart knows what the mind struggles to believe is a quote from my guides. Mm -hmm. So the mind is a wonderful servant, a terrible master. When we're meditating, when we're making music, when we're creative, inspired in the flow of things, etc., journaling, etc., all of that, the mind, you know, there's a um, harmony and a balance uh, that uh, begins to flow between the heart and the mind, between the feminine of the emotion and spirit mm -hmm. and the masculine of the, the body and the mind, is the way my guides put it. Uh, you have a mind and a body, you are your soul and spirit. Uh, give what you have to what you are and rem and become become who you truly came here to be is is the full quote So to come back to gratitude You're feeling it. You're believing it. You're generating it. You're loving it. You're grateful for it You're happy about it. You're excited Enthusiastic all those things all of those are what Lazarus calls generative energies okay. so uh, to come back to Esther and Abraham the, the metaphor that I use is uh, here's the fence and I'm on, my mind is on the fence and I can go over here where everything is great and it's all working out and I am loved, safe and supported or I can go over here where I'm not okay and the world's not fair and life is not good and I'm struggling and, and worried and fearful. So we know this feels terrible and this feels wonderful mm -hmm. and every moment we're deciding what do I believe, what do I believe? So um, the, the attitude of gratitude, as they say, you know, love a little poem there, that <laughs> puts us in the zone that says you are safe, loved and supported. All is working together for good. Everything will work out, etc., etc. My The quote that I love from Abraham is um, the basis of life is freedom and the purpose of life is joy. And so everything we want is over here in joy. And then the contrast is simply telling us, are we moving towards that or away from that? Yeah, wow, that's that's a great analogy. I love it. Thank yeah, you. Fantastic. Thank you. And a great quote. Yes. Um, analogy, not metaphor. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> no. I always get those confused. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, when we as, as we explore this, you know, uh, again, gratitude and, you, you know, I can imagine how the repeated gratitude, because I know it myself from yeah. my own practice, yeah, yeah. does start to seep into your bones and yeah. into, into, into you. And it yeah. does make a tangible difference. Yeah. You know? And you can, you know, after a session of, of writing your, your gratitude and meditating on that or thinking about it even and yeah. truly engaging yeah. with it, you know, you do feel your spirit lifted, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But would you, exactly. would you agree that, you know, I mean, a lot of people operate on autopilot. A lot right. of people, you know, they go throughout their lives, you know, um, trying to get so many things done. They never create that inner space. Yeah. So there is a conscious choice and a decision involved in yeah. taking this path. Yeah. Isn't there? Yeah. And then maintaining it, not just deciding today and then going back to your crazy, busy, chaotic life. Sure. You have to build in the space and the time purposefully. Yes, right? you have to commit to it. Isn't that true? Oh God, a hundred percent. You know, and the yes. ability to say maybe no to certain things so sure. that you do ring fence that time in your life That's on right. a daily basis. That's well said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have to say no to what we don't want to be able to say yes to what we do want. Yeah. 
and yes and no are the most important choices that we have all yeah. all day long and uh, you know to come to what you're saying there I mean I've been looking at your videos you know you were on a dock somewhere and uh, you, were, you <laughs> turned the camera around and showed us uh, the beautiful beautiful place you were sitting mm -hmm. and then you had a, a picture recently of uh, a bio of uh, a, a musician and you had a mince pie there and you're saying this is a nice moment kids you know I'm, I'm come join with me in my nice moment here so again brother it's like you know it's not complicated mm -hmm. it is not complicated or, or esoteric and you don't have to abandon everything you've ever learned about god or catholicism or your family or your traditions not required yeah. it just you know what will make your heart sing today? Yeah. What will lift your spirits today? You know, maybe you deliver some food to a neighbor, or you go shopping for somebody that's a shut in or, you know, whatever you can do that gets you out of your own way and says, yeah, I'm in life and life is a good thing. You know, yeah. it's when we get trapped in these little bubbles of fear. And I have to say, you know, God, please save everyone from watching the, the, the news every night, whatever that means, you know, because that is not helping uh, people's immune systems or, uh, or finances, as far as I can tell. But, um, you know, finding, finding uh, things that, like you're saying, lift our spirits, uh, make us feel glad to be alive. Those are precious moments. These are precious moments. Yeah, well said, well said. I agree 100%. No, and I keep playing devil's advocate here. You you're know, fine. Me, you know, because, you're fine. Um, because again, I'm trying to, uh, you know. Put me to the test. Everything you're saying, <laughs> everything you're saying is absolutely value add. And Thank I agree you. 100%. Thank you. Again, you know, because we live in a, in a certain world with, you know, a lot of things going on. Yeah. It has a flip side. So let's say we've got a lot of things to be grateful about. Even yeah. the, little, the little things, which is a message I put out there to everybody on the page recently. Yes, good. You know, to try to appreciate the little things and in, in a mindful way. Yeah. But the darker side of the world then will inspire other fe other feelings, you know, like sure. res resentment and, you sure. know, um, uh, I suppose hostility to an, in an extreme case. Sure. But hatred, we, fear, we, yeah, jealousy, totally. envy. You said it. Yeah. It's, it's all there laid out. Okay. Yeah. And what I'm curious about as well is I know them all. one of the <laughs> <laughs> I've done them all, my friend. Sure. What, what I'm curious about is, you know, the antidote to that. And one of the uh, one one concept that, that springs to mind is uh, forgiveness. Oh, you beat me to it. Yeah, okay. that's absolutely it. So forgiveness is is something that is a bit more of a challenge for people. Uh, there's solace to be found in forgiveness, but yes. it's actually getting to that place of yeah. forgiveness is yeah. is a tough ask for, for, for most of us, if it's yeah. been a real transgression against you. Yes. And so people who might be feeling, you know, maybe their toes are being tread on at the moment because of restrictions or lockdowns sure. or threats, that kind of thing. Sure. Um, you know, who are feeling resentful, how do you get inner peace by using forgiveness, you know, yeah, for yeah. that situation? Oh, I'm so glad you're bringing this up. Yeah, that was absolutely the next thought in my mind here. Um, so compassion, forgiveness, acceptance. Mm. To me and my guides, those three work together. And uh, you've absolutely, uh, you know, hit the nail on the head here. Um, if I, you know, so here's another quote that connects to that. They say, no one can take your power from you. You can only give it away mm. and no one can give you your freedom. You have to take it because it's yours. Mm. So it is that paradox and paradox is to me the central theme of, of the spiritual journey. Like we're saying, we live in a duality. Mm. We live in this world where our free will determines and our beliefs determine what choices we will or won't make. And those choices determine the quality of our life. Mm. So you're, you're, you're absolutely right on, my friend. Forgiveness is to work with compassion. Like, I don't want to live in hatred and jealousy and resentment and fear. I want to live in love and enthusiasm and compassion and joy and mercy and all of that. Mm. So compassion is, I, I have, what's Lazarus's definition? Compassion is the care that's born out of sorrow. So like the death of my dad, moving as a child many times, whatever other challenges I've had to cope with and, and overcome, mm. those have softened my heart, I, I trust and hope. The compassion is I have more kindness and mercy for others because of enduring my own suffering. Yeah. Without suffering, there is no awakening, really, as we're saying here. So, but how do we make our suffering meaningful? Well, we transcend this illusion of separation. We say, I care about your suffering. 
I care about your happiness. Mm -hmm. I care about your pain. So if I am judging you, judgment versus discernment, if I'm judging you, I hate you, I resent you, I'm jealous of you, I'm envious of you, I have made you my enemy mm -hmm. and your happiness has become my problem somehow. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I can have compassion for your pain and suffering and forgive myself for judging you or forgive myself for thinking that you, I need to forgive you. See, forgiveness is not about the other person. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it, it's, it's about forgiving ourselves. So, but in pain, in fear, in all those lower energies, we do that and we think we're justified to do that. Mm -hmm. You've taken my home, my family, my finances, my freedom. Of course I hate you, etc. Okay. Well, again, that's Jesus saying, bless, pray for your enemies because you have none. Bless the situation and circumstance. Call out the good that God holds for you in this situation that you, without an open heart, you will not see it. Mm -hmm. So forgiveness helps us to open our hearts mm -hmm. to ourselves and thus to be able to do that to each other. Wow. Yeah. That's really well put. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Excellent. Thank you for that. Sure. My pleasure. Um, and I'm, I'm nearly at a, at a loss after taking that in because it's, you know, <laughs> That's a whole workshop right there. <laughs> yeah. And it is. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. you could theme a, a Oh, yeah, mornings, I've done it. You know, I've done yeah. workshops around that theme. Absolutely, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and on simply either gratitude or forgiveness. And, and it's the, again, it's the mechanics of, of putting that into practice is what we're curious, you know. Because, sure. Uh, because, again, you know, people watching this will say, well, you know, I'd love to, but how do I get there? How sure. do I actually that, do it? That's you know? a great, that's exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So there is, yeah, no, this is the point. Uh, how do I forgive myself mm -hmm. for making mistakes, for lying to myself, for lying to others, for betraying promises, for whatever I've done that I'm holding guilt, shame and blame about? Mm -hmm. The guilt, shame, blame game, my guides call it, yeah, <laughs> which is, frankly, that's where the Catholic Church is uh, a great teaching, you see. <laughs> They'll give you all that, yeah? Guilt, shame, blame game, bless you. So uh, how we do that is uh, there's a Hawaiian technique called Ho'oponopono. Yeah. Do you know it? I've heard of it, yeah. Okay, well, here we go. Yeah. So Dr. Hugh Len, who's a chap that I got to meet at a workshop, he was a, uh, he's a psychiatrist. He was working in a... Um, asylum in Hawaii for years and he was in charge of the most hopeless cases yeah uh, people that were medicated and locked down and all that because they were a danger to themselves and society mm -hmm. and for three years he practiced Ho'oponopono which means self-cleansing so he would look at their picture and he would say to their picture I'm sorry I love you please forgive me mm -hmm. thank you mm -hmm. I'm sorry I love you. Repeat it, yeah. Please forgive me. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry. I love you. Please forgive me. Thank you. And you see, <clears throat> this is where we transcend the illusion of separation, Peter, because it's not about them, me, you, any of us. Whoever we're with, whoever we're thinking about is a mirror to our higher self, if you like. Our, our oneness, mm -hmm. our cosmic oneness. So if I'm forgiving you or I'm forgiving myself, same difference. I'm cleaning the glass, I'm cleaning the mirror, mm -hmm. and that anything that opens the heart, again, quiets the mind and awakens the spirit. Mm -hmm. So you can feel the difference just hearing those words. Yeah. And so there's that, and then my guides also, when I work with the inner child for myself or, uh, or others, I say, I forgive myself, I accept myself, I love myself, mm -hmm. I set myself free. Yeah. So those are the things that I practice, so simple, but boy, do they work, yeah. you know, yeah. they, they, they really bring the medicine. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, yeah, man. Okay. Yeah. No. How good can we stand it? Yeah. That's the only challenge you <laughs> yeah. see. How much it's love will we, will we let into our little lives? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Especially in these times that, that you know, that, that this is what I keep coming across. Yeah. No, you know, Lou Martin, okay. You and how you operate in the world and how you serve people, um, you know, I'd like to kind of just summarize, you know, for the viewers and for people, you know, who may want to connect with you. Sure. You know, who want to, to talk a bit more, uh, perhaps one to one as well. You yeah. And um, so what would you 
what would you say to people, folks who maybe want to get in touch, who sure. are interested in talking about the ideas that you've maybe spoken about today? Yeah, brilliant. Um, if you could just maybe give us a rundown. And, sure. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been a joy. Believe me, it's really been a joy to chat with you here today. No, Thank you, brother. It's been an education. Thanks a million, Lou. Sure, sure. Um, uh, so you can go to my Facebook page, Lou Martin, uh, and uh, follow me there. And I was mentioning before today's numbers. Uh, uh, I have 1776 followers as of today, which has been slowly growing over years. So that's a nice little number for an American to see on a, on a good day on the 13th, which I'm born on the 13th and having seen 808 this morning and 909 right after that. Um, but so come to my Facebook page or as you said, you can go to, uh, I have a YouTube channel called Awakened Spirits Network. And as of this week, I've just started that same uh, name on um, uh, Anchor and Spotify. So I'm now at long last a podcaster and I have Ali's uh, interview there. And I just put last night uh, another bright light, a guy named Joseph Delaney from the UK. So he's up. And uh, so those are there. And then I have uh, two eBooks that are available and I've got two more in the pipeline. And I'm happy to talk with anyone about any of these things at any time. What I usually do when I work with people is uh, I say I'm a spiritual counselor and a channel. And so, you know, I do a 60 minute session with people and I record that mm -hmm. and they listen back to it and things shift every time. So, Fantastic. yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to put you on the spot and I'm going to ask you to play some music for sure. us, which we will cut to shortly sure, sure. after, this, after Absolutely. the discussion. Yes. Um, will so, I leap up and uh, no, get you ready can, for that? Can, okay. We'll do that in a second. But right, man. As, as, a kind of a final, <laughs> as a kind of a final wrap up um, yes. for, for the conversation, yeah. um, I always ask this, I, you know, I literally, have I missed anything that you would like mm. to say to God, that's so thoughtful. the folks on the, um, Bless you. Uh, on the, the less stressed space, mm -hmm. uh, all the people who are tuning in. Uh, so. You know, is there anything mm. in terms of a central message uh, that you would like to, or a summary or, of thoughts or a stream of consciousness that you want sure. to actually put out there? Well, I'm just going to channel for you is what I'm going to do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll just get out of my own way here. Okay. So thank you. Pleasure. Go ahead and close your eyes, turn within and take a deep breath. And sit back and relax. Be very comfortable. Yeah. Right. God bless you, dear friends. Here we go one more time. Imagine seven stars that spiral down through time and space in your mind's eye, touching the crown of your head. Take a deep breath. Relax and release. Crown, third eye, throat and heart. Take another deep breath. And down we go. Relax and release the will center, the tummy, the sacral, the root and dear friends down, hips, legs, feet down into Mother Earth, all the way down, down, down. Put your roots down. Take a deep breath. Right. God bless you, dear friends. Well, it's a pleasure to have a moment here. God bless you to remind you that absolutely you are a spiritual being having a human experience, dear friends. It's uh, something that you're going to be hearing and working with and thinking about uh, with increasing uh, results, dear friends, over the next few weeks and months as the uh, as 2021, dear friends, comes to a powerful conclusion. Everyone who would be drawn to the energies of uh, our friends here is on this path of awakening, healing and growth. And dear friends, uh, the awakening comes when you realize your choices matter to you and to the world, dear friends. That as the saying goes, indeed, you are the world that you inhabit uh, through the choices that you make and the decisions that you make each and every day. Dear friends, you've heard so much here, a feast of possibilities, yeah, to make joyous choices, to feel and to know that your happiness matters to the creation and the creator of all that is mother, father, God, dear friends, and dear ones to know that you take nothing from anyone else when you decide to live a joyous and a meaningful life, dear friends, indeed, you're giving something to the world that is in great need of the visionary and the way shower, dear friends, each and every one of you reminders that life is meant to be joyous and meaningful. And there is a purpose to what is unfolding in your own personal story and in the story of this world, dear friends, one and the same. So healing, dear friends, is when you let go of the old ways of looking and doing and being, and you become more deliberate and more discerning about staying awake, dear friends, staying in that vibration of devotion 
and dedication and commitment to the love and light of all that is as you. And dear friends, finally, growth is when you begin to truly understand, to remember, and to know that you are the creator of your reality, full stop, dear friends. No qualifiers needed any longer. And that you're the dreamer awake, and that you're living, dear friends, in the time of humanity and Mother Earth, returning to that garden, that heaven on Earth, that full realization, dear friends, that the love and light of all that is as you can and will and is fully prepared to create any dream that your heart desires. Dear friends, life is a gift and it is yours to open from within that beautiful loving heart as you've done here and now once again. So dear friends, we give thanks for you. We bless you. We celebrate this time and this space and your conscious creation of a more meaningful and joyous experience each and every day. We love you so. Peace and blessings. All is well. Namaste. Thank you. Lou Martin, I think we'll go to some music. Peter Coglin, thank you, brother. Pleasure. Thank you yeah. so much. My pleasure. Turn your head around 